Hi everyone, it's David and welcome back to The Good Life Journey. I think we're all pretty aware of the health and environmental benefits of walking, cycling and or using public transport. But have you ever paused to consider the true cost of your daily car commute? The true cost of car ownership? What if I told you that making a simple change could not only benefit your health, but also pave the way to a millionaire's retirement? In today's video, we aim to answer two simple questions. Firstly, what financial impact does giving up your car have on your retirement savings once you've concluded your working career? And secondly, what financial impact would giving up your car have on your timeline to reaching financial independence, assuming that you wanted to aim for a non-conventional career and you wish to retire at an earlier age? Remember that the simple idea behind financial independence is to save as much as you can and to invest it so that you can eventually live off those investments without being dependent on employment. To answer these two questions, we will examine the true cost of car ownership and how it relates to our disposable income, which for most is the net take-home pay. All right, first we will brief briefly check uh, this publication by Gosling and colleagues. I'm probably not pronouncing his name correctly, Swedish researcher. Uh, anyway, they published uh, The Lifetime Cost of Driving a Car in the Journal of Ecological Economics in 2022. And the academic paper is basically giving details on, yeah, summarizing the different costs of uh, vehicle ownership um, and going all the way from like an Opel Corsa to like a fancy Mercedes. So what I find interesting is that you can look at the paper in detail, it's open access, but table three is uh, summarizing nicely their findings. Um, and what we see uh, here on the left hand side are the different types of categories that they consider. So they're consider considering vehicle depreciation, operating costs, fixed costs, repairs and maintenance and other costs. And this is really interesting because I think it's something that people don't usually consider. They maybe they think about the cost of owning, of the buying the vehicle, the petrol, perhaps the, you know parking, and some degree of maintenance. But certainly this list of things, uh, I think it blew my mind when I read it at least. Um, so in addition to the vehicle depreciation, one should consider fuel, engine oil, car wash and care, emissions, taxes, liability premium, full insurance premium, parking fees, navigation, inspection, other fees, driving licensure, maintenance and repairs, oil change, tire wear and small repairs, other repairs, tire replacement, residential parking congestion costs. So this is quite a long list. I hope you're still with me. But what's interesting here, we have, they have three different groups of cars. So one represented by Opel Corsa, the first block, uh, Volkswagen Golf and a Mercedes. And the middle um, column of each group is giving you the euros per month. So if you go down to the bottom, it summarizes the addition of all these costs. So for the case of the Opel Corsa, uh, you're looking at over 500 euros per month. In this case, 554 euros per month. In the case of the Golf, 634 and in the case of Mercedes, over 1,000 euros, so 1,068 euros. Uh, this totally blew my mind that the cost, the average cost uh, was so high. And yeah, I would be really curious to hear your reactions. Please let me know in the comments below, is this something that you'd be expecting or is it totally off the charts in your opinion? For our non-European friends, of course, these exact numbers don't apply directly to your situation, but the concept and conclusions of this video are generally applicable globally and are not tied to any single location. Now that we've pinned down the true cost of car ownership, let's examine what an average household budget looks like so we can evaluate what's the financial impact of giving up the car. And for this exercise, we're going to use uh, German data, uh, but this can be, be easily adapted and applicable to, to the data in your region. According to official statistics, German households spent 2,846 euros per month in 2022. This is roughly 34,000 euros per year. Despite their reputation for thriftness, Germans, on average, have a modest savings rate. On average, they only save 10.8% of their after-tax income. In a previous video, we discussed the important role of optimizing your savings rate, the single most important factor for achieving financial independence. We can now input these key data points into a financial independence calculator. This is the one that I personally like to use, although there are several others. I'll link it in the description below. Uh, and essentially the important data points that we have to input here are household spending, which is what I enter here, roughly 34,000. We're assuming that this is the same amount that we'll need in retirement. And the second important number is the savings rate. So as I mentioned, Germans on average have the 10.8%. So I entered the after-tax income amount that would be needed to considering the spending that I just mentioned to have a 
roughly 11% savings rate. And uh, yeah, you can play around with the different variables in this calculator. If you hover on, around each uh, individual item, it, express, it sort of explains how, how to enter it. And we've explained this in previous videos. If you're curious about how to use this tool, I rec recommend that you check them out. But anyway, according to this uh, financial independence calculator, it would take this average German almost 33 years to reach financial independence. In other words, a place where they don't have to rely on uh, employment. In light of these numbers, it's no wonder that most individuals work very lengthy careers yet still have to rely very strongly on public pensions. They're simply not saving enough. Their savings rate is too low. Unfortunately, for the case of Germany, a significant proportion of population does not invest their savings. And therefore, the projections that we just showed wouldn't be applicable to them. The assumption and these estimates and these projections that we've shown is that you actually invest your savings. So now we're in a position to address our first question. What financial impact would giving up a car have on your retirement savings upon the conclusion of your 40 plus working career? All right, let's assume that you're reading this at the start of your career. You're 25 years old and looking at a conventional 40 year um, work career. So we go, we're using a compound interest calculator and we're assuming zero initial investment at a roughly 6% real return, which is yeah, quite conservative if you're invested in index funds on long-term buy and hold strategy. And okay, let's consider a 40 year career and we're depositing 505 euros uh, per month. So notice that this amount is the 554 euros of the Opel Corsa from the publication. And we've subtracted roughly 50 euros, which is uh, the, public, the, tr the cost of a public transport ticket, at least in Germany. So we can see how, what impact does it have to invest an additional 500 um, per, per month. And we see that we're very close to reaching 1 million after 40 years. Okay, let's see how it would have to, I bet with already with 41 years, uh, 41 year career, you would have 1 million, you could retire with 1 million. And this is in addition to all the, of course, pension benefits that you've accrued during your working career. And now let's go on to our second question. What happens if you do, simply don't want to work such a long career? What financial impact would giving up your car have on the timeline to reaching financial independence? To reaching a place where you don't have to depend on employment? The answer is that it can potentially trim your working career by roughly nine years. So by allocating an additional 505 euros monthly, which again represents the conservative end of car ownership costs, our annual spending uh, goes down from 34,152 to 28,000 roughly. And the timeline to reaching financial independence goes from 30, almost 33 years, if you remember from the previous graph, all the way down to 24 uh, years. So in other words, we reduce it by nine years. And at this point, some of you may be asking yourselves, why does it have such a large effect? And the reason is it has its two factors. So on the one hand, you're saving and investing 500 euros more each month, which is a very significant amount. But also secondly, at the end of your timeline to reaching financial independence, you actually need to have less money invested to sustain a more frugal lifestyle. So it's a double win. You're saving and investing more and your expenses are also lower. Do you currently own a car? And if so, have you ever considered the financial implications? Please share with us in the comments below. Thank you for joining me today on the Good Life Journey. If the idea of retiring a millionaire excites you, please go ahead and hit the like and subscribe buttons to not miss out on any future videos. If you enjoy the content of this video, you may find more valuable financial insights on how to reach financial independence in a dedicated playlist on my channel. Check it out and continue your path to a more prosperous life. All right, thank you very much for watching. Good luck, take care, and see you in the next video.